This is the brand new Galaxy Z Flip 7, and here are some previous flips for a quick comparison. So let's go ahead and get that Flip 7 out of the box. First thing we see is that brand new blue. In my opinion, this is the best looking blue that Samsung has ever released. I really love this color. Let's go ahead and pull this out. And we get what we'd expect with a little quick start guide, a USB-C to USB-C cable, and a semi ejector tool. And now we can take a closer look at the Flip 7 itself. So let's go ahead and pull this film off. And one of the things that you can tell immediately by looking at this compared to the previous generations is that it is significantly larger. So the width of the device has increased significantly, but the height is still about the same. And for reference, this is the Galaxy Z Flip 5, which had the same dimensions as the Flip 6. The only difference is that these camera bumps are a little bit bigger on the Flip 6. Taking a look at the slimness, it seems about the same to me. I don't think there are any changes there. I think this is literally just a larger version of the Flip. Even comparing to the original Z Flip, the sizes are still pretty comparable in terms of thickness. But when I fold all the devices, you can see that the Flip 7 is thinner than all of the other devices in all dimensions, at least in the closed position. And it's especially noticeable in the hinge area because it used to have this wedge shape, but now it folds completely flat, which is something that had started with the Flip 5. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on now, and we'll take a closer look at one of the biggest changes which is the screen. It actually now fills up this entire space, which is certainly new for this generation of the Flip. And here's where we could really see that difference in screen size. You had this super tiny screen on the original Flip, and then when we got to the Flip 3, they made it a little bit bigger and a little more usable. On the Flip 5, they made a significant improvement to the screen size. And on the Flip 6, we now have a full screen device. This looks way more premium, way more modern than any of the previous devices. I love how the cameras are just kind of a cutout now and the screen wraps all the way around them. And this is gonna make it a whole lot easier to do more useful things on the cover screen versus the previous generations, especially if you're coming from something like a Flip 3 or a Flip 4. And looking at the inner displays, we can really see the benefit of that wider screen on the Flip 7 versus the previous generations because ever since the original Flip, the screen size has remained pretty much the exact same all the way through up until this generation. And it was really only those changes to the cover screen that were being made. And this is something I really wanna point out here. You probably can see this in the video. If I turn it, you can definitely see it. I'm gonna turn the screen off here. So this peeling is something that can happen on Flip devices, foldable devices in general. This was after about six months of daily usage. And specifically, this is the Z Flip 4. So it's a few generations behind the Flip 7. So hopefully Samsung has made enough changes to the screen that this doesn't happen anymore. But the screen's not actually broken here. This is just a protective film that you can actually remove. And it's a relatively common thing with Flip devices, generally speaking. And if you've owned previous Flips, uh, I'd love to know which Flip you had and if this happened to you and, and how long it actually took for this to happen. Because it really seems hit or miss. Because for me personally on my Fold devices, I've never had this happen. It was only on this one Flip 4 that I've seen this. Regardless, I thought it was worth pointing out. All right, I ran out of time filming in the hotel that I was in, and now I'm back in the office to finish this video. So with all the phones open, another big thing you'll notice between these is the crease. So this is the original Z Flip. That crease in the middle was very noticeable. Like every time I ran my finger across, it was just annoying to feel it. And it was the same for the next few generations as well. Even the Z Flip 5, it's really noticeable. You run your finger across it, you're gonna know it. The crease on the Flip 7 is significantly less noticeable. This is the first big upgrade in terms of reducing crease size in pretty much any of the generations. Now, obviously the more times you fold this and open it or just keep it folded for an extended period of time, that crease is going to become a bit more noticeable over time, but we're starting off in a way better position than we did on previous flips. And another big improvement with the cover display is that it now gets up to 2600 nits, which is a significant increase in brightness compared to the previous generations. The Flip 5 and Flip 6, for example, could only get to 1600 nits on the cover screen. So that means it's gonna be a lot easier to use this cover screen on a bright day. And besides the improved brightness, the cover display is now 120 hertz, which gives you a lot smoother motion. In terms of weight, the Flip 7 comes in at 188 grams, which is only one gram heavier than the Flip 
5 and Flip 6, which have a significantly smaller screen. So it's awesome to see that Samsung added a lot more screen real estate with barely any added weight. Dust and water resistance remain the same again this year with an IP48 rating. Now let's do a quick speed test between the devices. And we're going to be using Wildlife Extreme because this is the most intense test that can be run on all four devices. And you can already see a huge difference in frame rate. The original flip is really <laughs> struggling to get any frames per second here. And then the flip 4 is still stuttering a ton. The flip 5 is stuttering just a little bit. And the flip 7 is clearly ahead. Looking at the results, we get what we would expect with the Flip 7 having the best performance. But what's interesting here is the Flip 5 to the Flip 7, it's actually not that big of an increase in performance considering the Flip 6 would fit somewhere in between these two devices. So while there will be some performance increase, that's not going to be the reason to get the Flip 7 over the Flip 6. At least not for gaming. And now we're going to run a CPU benchmark. And a quick check of temperatures shows about 105 degrees on the Flip 7 a little bit less on the Flip 5, about the same on the Flip 4, and nearly 110 on the original Flip. Wow, we get some really surprising results here. The Flip 7 is worse than the Flip 5 in terms of performance right here. The other thing I've noticed too is that the Flip 7 screen is starting to dim. So there seems to be some sort of a performance inefficiency or Maybe it's just that the heat dissipation isn't quite as good on the Flip 7 versus previous generations, which is really surprising because this is a larger footprint. It's a wider screen. So that obviously means more surface area to dissipate heat with. Now, obviously, a bigger screen means there's going to be more heat generated by the screen itself. But generally, you'd expect a larger device to do better with heat performance. And all of these devices just ran both of those tests back to back. So they each had the same thermal load put on them. So just out of curiosity, I'm going to let these completely cool down. Then I'm going to run the test again and see if that changes the results. All right. All the devices have had a chance to cool down. Now let's go ahead and run the test again. So we have improvements across the board with the exception of the original flip, which actually got a little bit worse, but it's still pretty close to the original result. The Flip 7, though, saw a massive improvement with the reduction in temperature, but the single core score was still less than the single core score on the Flip 5. So I think it's important to bring in the Flip 6's score for a really good comparison to last year's models. So as you can see here, the average Flip 6 score was still better than the Flip 7, and the multi-core score was only a little bit less. And I think this comes down to the processor being used. So if I scroll down a little bit on these to the CPU information, you can see that the previous generations have all been using Qualcomm chips, specifically the Snapdragon chips, which are known to be incredibly fast and efficient chips. But this year, Samsung switched to an Exynos chip, specifically the Exynos 2500. And it's clear that the Exynos chips just aren't quite as good as the Snapdragon chips. Something else I've noticed with the Flip 7 is that it does seem to get hotter to the touch compared to the previous generations with the same workload. Now again, this is just preliminary testing over about a day or two. So that could change over time, but I think it's important to point out. And I think this is another important comparison. This is the Fold 7 in my right hand with the Snapdragon 8 Elite chip. And here's how those scores compare. It's a really significant difference. Another big addition to the Flip 7 is Samsung DeX. This is something we have never had on a Flip device before. And what this does is give you Samsung's desktop experience. So if you connect the Flip 7 to an external monitor, it'll give you a desktop-like experience that you can connect an external mouse and keyboard to and use your phone like a desktop computer to get real work done. Battery capacity is where we get another big upgrade. So missing here is the Flip 6, which had a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. So compared to last year's Flip, we get a 300 milliamp hour increase and compared to previous flips, we get an even greater increase. And this is a significant enough increase in battery capacity that I think that we will see better battery life on the Flip 7, despite having a larger display. When it comes to the cameras, we don't get much of an upgrade compared to the Flip 6. So if you have a Flip 6, don't expect any difference in picture quality going to a Flip 7. But if you come from a Flip 5 or an older device, we now have that 50 megapixel main sensor, which will be a significant improvement over those previous generations. And the main camera remains at 10 megapixels, so I wouldn't expect a big improvement here either, except for improvements in processing. But I personally wouldn't make that be your reason to upgrade. 
Another really important thing to point out is that Samsung's currently having a pretty big pre-order deals on the Flip 7, like a free storage upgrade and up to $600 off, depending on what you trade in. But on top of that, I also have exclusive affiliate links in the description and a pinned comment that'll get you a bonus deal on top of those pre-order deals. Just know that the bonus discount only applies for 30 minutes. So if you see that the discount is removed from your cart, just come back to the video, click the link again, and the bonus will be reapplied. And those affiliate links are actually the only way I can afford to purchase all the products I review on this channel. So a huge thanks to all of you who use my links. So is the Flip 7 worth the upgrade? Well, it's gonna depend heavily on what you're coming from. If you're coming from a Flip 6, then I'd say, no, it's not worth the upgrade unless you really want that significantly larger cover screen, as well as that wider inner screen. But you're not gonna see an improvement to the cameras, the performance, and probably not really even the battery life moving from the Flip 6 to the Flip 7. If you're coming from a Flip 5, it's the same story, probably not worth the upgrade except for the reasons I've already mentioned. But the other thing you get with the Flip 5 to the Flip 7 is the improved main camera, which will be significantly better. So if you take a lot of pictures, then upgrading from the Flip 5 or any older generation, you are going to see a significant difference in that picture quality moving to the Flip 7. Or you could also just save a little bit of money and get the Flip 6 and still get that better camera. It's not until you get to the Flip 4 or older devices that it really starts to become worth the upgrade because the display difference between the Flip 4 and older devices and the Flip 7 is huge. Your cover display is just gonna be so much more useful, which is kind of the point to these phones is to be able to use them in the closed position most of the time and then only open them up if you need to do something like web browsing or something more intense. You'll also see a significant battery improvement coming from one of these older devices, as well as some noticeable processor improvements and significantly brighter displays both on the inside and outside. If you guys have any specific questions about the Flip 7 versus the previous generation flips, let me know in the comments down below and I'll reply to as many as I can. And if you wanna see how the new Galaxy Watch 8 compares to the Galaxy Watch 7, you can check out this video here. Or if you're curious about Samsung's brand new Fold 7, you can check out this video instead. That's it for this tech episode. Jesus loves you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.